very uh, positive image in front of others. For example, even when we go to buy clothes or to buy something from the shops or from the markets, we select the best, for example, the clothes or maybe the shoes, maybe this and that, such that when I put it and when I come in front of the people, I become very special. People recognize me in our fashionable language which we use today, VIP. <laughs> Isn't it? These are the things which we, we like and we, we always do like that. All of us, without any exception. Suppose I recognize something about you which is very pleasing, which is very wonderful, you feel very happy. Isn't it? This is our experience. And on the other hand, all that are negatives about our lives. which perhaps are very shameful. Sometimes it's when people come to know. We keep the best of our top secrets. We try our best and sometimes this trial gives us difficulty to keep the best of our top secrets and not to reveal to anybody. They are only known to me God. And sometimes worse, even I try to hide it even from God. <laughs> Isn't it? I even try my best to hide it from God. And sometimes I also try to hide it from myself. I, I have a kind of a mechanism to force the mind to forget it, to wrap it away so that it does not become part and parcel of my life. Because if I look at it, it is shameful. And I don't want it. And yet, I am the one who do it. This is our daily experience of life, how we relate with each other, how we live in this world. And everyone is not accepted and to do this in this way. So, uh, there is a story which is very important to help us to reflect on this of a parishioner. This parishioner was a lady and she became sick and unfortunately she died. And when she died, she was taken to hell. And when she reached there, to her great surprise, she found the parish priest who had died before her, found her, and she was surprised. She said, ah, Father, even you, you are here. And the priest said, shh, talk slowly, the bishop is just behind you. This story, of course, you know, <laughs> this is a story that uh, it talks about the empty that we experience in our lives. And so uh, uh, when we, 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 have, we have heard from this reading, two people went to pray in the temple. One was a Pharisee, another one was a tax collector. And they are not, they, 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 their names are not given to us, but they are only known by their profession, uh, uh, professional names like the Pharisee and the tax collector. And I'm sure many of you have already known about this and so many uh, knowledge or information about these characters are known. Perhaps maybe the tax collector, but the tax collectors are those which are already known in the society uh, that they are public sinners and they are always despised and socially, religiously, and economically they are always corrupt. So these two people went to pray in the temple. <coughs> And I would like to mention, to repeat it again, uh, the prayers of these two people. 
the first one, which is the Pharisee, this is what the Pharisee says. He went in front of God in the temple, and this is what he prayed. God, I thank you that I am not like other men who are extortioners. Extortioners, this was the father, the, the tax collectors, because tax collectors were those ones who were very corrupt, they cheat people. They, they are Jews, uh, they, 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 they have already made a program, a definite program with the government, and the government has accepted, so they pay the government flat rate. This year, I give you this much, and then I will be able to collect the taxes from the people in order to square up what. So when they go to collect, even if you are cheated, you do not have anywhere to appeal for me. So they would be able to collect a lot of money and much of it is kept for them. And the other one is to pay what they have given to the government. You are already there. So when he says that I'm not like other men who are extortioners, the reference is especially to these tax collectors who are already known that they are bad people. I am not an ex ex extortioners. I am not unjust. I am not an adulterer. I am not like this tax collector is referring specifically to the one who is near him. I fast twice a week. And I give tithe to everything that I get in my duty, that everything, a tenth of that which I get every day, I give it up. This is the prayer of the Pharisee. Let us listen to the prayer of the tax collector. Before this tax collector said anything, he was only described. The one who is writing this is describing him, and then the tax collector at the end says something quite short. The tax collector said this. This is what it was described. This is the description of he stands very far off. If, for example, this is the tabernacle, around the evening, that's not entering inside, he stands from there. But at least inside the temple, he stands very far off. Would not even lift his eyes to heaven. To raise his eyes, the word heaven there refers to God. He could not lift his eyes to seek to, to, to God. He was beating his breast. And this is what he says. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Now, between these two, the Pharisee and the task collector, who will replace the two? I leave it to each one of us. St. John, in this writing, the first letter of St. John, in this writing, this is what he says. John says, if we say we have no sin, we see ourselves. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Brothers, it is not easy to face the truth of life. And if we keep on deceiving ourselves and escaping, even hiding those things which I don't want to remember them, those were the things which give me shame. I don't want to remember them. I don't want to think about it. And if when I'm in front of the people, my words are very selective. Everything is very careful to make sure that those top secrets which are there should not come out. But if you really want to live, just to live, You see, living is, as human being, is, is somebody said something which I still remember and it is, I see that it is true. That if you are deprived of food, 
you can stay, especially for men, you can stay about nine days, and afterwards, slowly you can die. If you are deprived of water, you will take less than food because water is very much necessary in the body because all the activities in the body needs water so that everything can take place. So if you are deprived of water, you will take less than nine days. Ten days, you die out. But if you are deprived of the meaning of life, you die immediately. You may be physically there, but not you are dead. That's why we say, without God, we cannot be. And so when we say we live, we don't want to be like the stones, the rocks, the trees, the plants. We want to be like human beings. And if you do not have meaning at all in your life, you have lost meaning, you die immediately. Some people commit suicide. Others, in any way, it is, it is finished. Not long, not even a second. Food you can take sometimes, water you can take sometimes, but meaning you die immediately. When we see in the first reading, in the first reading, I just want to quote on one uh, 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 part, part of their sentence there. The wise man says, the Lord is the judge, and with him there is no attempt. The Lord is the judge, and with him there is no attempt. Especially for those who are weak, when they cry to him, he will always be able to listen to them. The prayer of the humble person pierces the clouds. St. Paul is speaking, and we have to understand it in the context in which he's speaking. And he says, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. He's, he's telling the truth. He's not being proud that I have finished the race now, for me now, or to so. No. The context tells us that this is even when he was speaking, he was speaking when he was in prison, and moreover, even he says he went to the court and nobody stood by him. Even those who used to be very close to him did not stand by him, and he was left alone. Thank God that the Lord stood by me, and I was able to proclaim the word of God. I would like to conclude with these uh, points connection which is very important and very uh, uh, cutting in our hearts. The church is very wise and we will have the sacraments. Jesus is the one who instituted these sacraments. In the Catholic tradition we recognize seven of them and one of the seven is the sacrament of reconciliation. sacrament of reconciliation and in, in the sacrament of reconciliation the essence the core of, the, of going for confession to be reconciled with the Lord first and foremost is to feel the shame God is not visible for us his presence is in us we are inside in him but we cannot with our physical high senses we cannot see him so in that sense for you really to physically feel you are ashamed, you go to a priest. Many people do not want, they can simply simplify it, ah, after all God is with me, so why should I go to the priest? I just talk straight away to him. You are avoiding, you are avoiding the shame. I am avoiding the shame. I am not facing the truth of my life. Sin kills. So the first point as I go for confession, first and foremost, is it to be ready to accept the shame and I go directly. And when I go for confession, I don't defend myself. Every moment that you say, me, maybe me alone, I do not know. Sometimes, this is what I have experienced as a priest, for example, when I was 
I was just ordained within one week. And so I went outside to celebrate mass and there was a lady, uh, an old uh, woman, came to confess. You see, Father, I did this because the child is like this. I did this because of this. I did this because of this. this, this, this. You know, I did this because of this, because of this. Then in the end, I told her, then I will not say it is okay. Don't worry. Very common, especially for us priests, when they come to, 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 to confess. Oh, I have seen number six, I have seen number seven, I have seen the number eight, I have number, number, number. You are going, <laughs> we are going in, in the sea. Isn't it? Yeah. We are not facing the truth. And once we confess sincerely and we face the truth, you don't have to wait. You will experience relief. You will experience meaning. You will experience a new life. This is what my personal experience takes me. When I go to confession and I really uh, confess well, I experience relief. You see, keeping secret is, destroys us. It makes, gives us a lot of pressure. All the things that we keep very tightly that people do not come to know, now there is opportunity that the church gives us we are not like other traditions where you go and confess everything. It is dangerous. It is not prudent. And it is not advisable to do it like that. Now the church gives us the opportunity and puts in a position where I can be able to go and express myself to a priest. And moreover, the obligation of a priest to talk about the confession outside, that is already a mortal sin that cannot be forgiven. To go and to say that this is what has been told to me by this. When I'm talking about this woman, I'm not really breaking my, 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 my obligation as a priest. I'm just only keeping the experience of passed through something which can be useful for us to help us. So when we go to confession, first to feel the shame and to be sincere and to know that I did it. The reasons may be there, but I did it. Then secondly, the only thing that we should be able to know is that we accept that this is, I am the one who did it. And we have to tell the truth as it is. It is not somebody else. It's not because uh, Emmanuel has done this to me. That's why I sin. When I go to confession, I just say that I have done it. Very easy to talk like this, but when you know that we are condemned to speak, but we don't really forgive us. We please who go to preach. We are condemned to to, to preach. Uh, the other time you remember that uh, the, 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 the Archbishop sent Father Omoni to come and to present him when he was preaching. Then the woman came to say, Oh Father, Father bless me. Then he said, Sometimes we preach inside there we are finished completely. When a woman says like that, inside he will say, I wish you could be able to bless yourself because there are not one to bless you. <laughs> So you, 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 we are all in the same. You remember that story? Shh, the shop is behind you. I tell you. He does not know our titles. Sin does not know our titles. There is no anything that goes beyond the mercy of God. Don't condemn to yourself. It is a struggle. It is a journey which is not easy. It is to face the truth is difficult. And sometimes you feel as if that you are like that, then you are not worthy to be a human being. That's your psychological problem. That makes you like that. There is an option. There is opportunity beyond that. Within your limitations, beyond your limitation, there is opportunity. There is a life there. So don't kill yourself. Lord be with you. Amen. For his good. All the time. And all the time. For his good. As you see it.